Hello, this is Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Bregman of the Jewish Executive Learning Network and in today's short and sweet clip I'd like to respond in video format to a question I just received by email. The email came like this. It said, Hi Rabbi Bregman, I'm a big fan of your videos on YouTube and your channel. Thank you so much for the stuff you do. You're welcome. And then this is the question. Basically, your, what is your input on Ashkenazi Jews marrying Sephardic Jews? I'm having a hard time figuring out is it important? Is this a big deal? Is this not a big deal? Um, my, my friends have this question. We live in America. Uh, it's primarily an Ashkenazi kind of country. Overwhelmingly, maybe I went to a Beis Yaakov or a yeshiva that had a lot of Ashkenazim. What do you think? What's your experience? What, you know, just what can you say on the topic? So this is, thank you very much to the person who reached out with that question. This is actually a question I've received from many, many people. So if you think I'm replying to your question, maybe not yours per se, but it's been percolating in my mind on the to get to list. So here we go. So number one, I would tell you like this. I, here are some great, great things that I think you need to ask yourself. And I think the answer to this question, Ashkenazi, marrying Sephardim, depends upon a multiplicity of factors. Here's some things that I think you should ask yourself. Number one, how attached to you, how attached are you to your Sephardic identity? I'm going to respond to this question um, as uh, from the perspective of the Sephardic person asking it, because that's usually how the question comes to me. Obviously, if you'd be Ashkenazi, you could ask the flip side, but let's do it from the Sephardic side. Number one, how attached are you to your Sephardic identity? How much is a part of your core Jewish identity? In other words, for some people that I meet day to day, could be in business, could be as a lawyer, could be, could be in Lakewood, could be in Shiorim, could be just when I visit Brooklyn, I meet a lot of people, some of them, their Sephardicness, their Sephardic hood is a core part of their Jewish identity. Other people say, no, not necessarily, you know, my mother's from Morocco, my, my father's from Syria, okay, you know, that's that, but I'm just, I just went to Beis Yaakov, or I just went to you know, Yeshiva in Brooklyn, like, you know, that's what it is, so how much is it part of your core identity? For some, it's really who they are. Others, they say, I'm just from who happened to, and they happen to have a Sephardic background, okay? And this especially comes up when they grow up around Ashkenazim. So that's question number one. Ask yourself. Number two, how much does this play a part of your halachic life? If you look in Shulchan Aruch, there are differences between the Beis Yosef, the Mechaber, the Ramah, differences la halacha. So, um, and some people don't actually know what the differences are, and that doesn't play a vital daily part of their lives. Uh, and for others, it is. Some people, for example, are very attached to the to the Psach Halachas, to the Halachic rulings of Rav Avadi Yosef Zatzal, whether it's about Sheitels and different things, and these are going to make big differences when you get married. So if this is a core part of your Halachic day-to-day -day identity, I strongly identify that I'm a kidneyous eater on Pesach, and I don't believe in Sheitels. I Whatever the example might be, that's a core part of your Halachic identity. You might want to make sure you marry a person who is Sephardic who will fall into line with this. So that's a, a second question I think you should ask yourself. Number three, how do your parents feel about it? You know, when you get married, it's not just the, the young man, the young lady you're marrying. You have to, you, you know, families are marrying families and you should take their feelings into account. How would this uh, impact, or not at all, their ability to accept your new spouse into the family? Ask their feelings and take them into account. Everybody would say, listen, I just want you to be happy. But some people would say, you know, honey, you know, you know, to my son Tatala, although I don't think Sephardim say Tatala, you know what I mean? You know, I, I really strongly prefer you marry a fellow Sephardic person. I think it would be easier. They'll understand your background. There are other times they say, listen, it's rough enough out there. Just marry the best person that's from, that, uh, that you like, that's willing to marry you back and move on with life, okay? That's that. And number four, I think it comes down to this. And in general, and this is sort of what I'm getting to, I always advocate, if you ask me my opinion, I would say that Shadokim is hard enough, just marry the absolute best person you can find. That would be my best advice and suggestion to you. Personally speaking, my mother comes from Morocco. My father is Ashkenazi. Uh, I married a, a, a young woman from Borough Park whose family is mostly, mostly Hasidish, and it works. So that's my perspective, but if your Sephardicness and Ashkenazi hood, I don't know if I'm making up terms, but you know what I mean. If that's a core part of your identity, 
go with it, roll with it. Just, I think these are some things you should take into account and hopefully that'll give you a little more guidance as to how you should proceed. Anyway, it's Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Bregman of the Jewish Executive Learning Network. Thank you for tuning in to today's Short and Sweet. Appreciate all of you who have been subscribing to my YouTube channel, connecting with me and subscribing to our classes in Torah anytime. I hope you'll continue to do so and we'll see you the next time. Thank you.